Now, now that we have the format set, Ryan, are you ready to rock and roll? Is the leprechaun Irish? Of course I'm ready to start I hope he's show. Irish. However, let's get going to Mike Bray, where we start on the hardwood, where Mike Bray stated Tuesday in his pregame media availability. When asked how he would celebrate after coaching in his final game inside Pavilion, he revealed he would enter Notre Dame hallowed grounds for the first time following the contest. Let's take a look. I'm very proud of this guy. I have never stepped foot in the linebacker in 23 years. I know you don't believe that. I've never been in it, but I'm going in tomorrow night. <laughs> it, it, it became a thing like, you know, obviously it's not my crowd probably, even though they say the burgers are good for lunch. Somebody told me that. Anyway, I've never really gone in there. And then it was like, nah, I'm not going in there. It's, uh, it's a merit badge. I've never been in the linebacker. And uh, people from out of town go, yo, man, you know, we're coming to go to the backers. Never been there. I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> and we're closing that summer. Mike. There ain't no curfew tomorrow. Now let's see if Mike Bray would celebrate more than just retirement as he took on the number 25th in ACC leading Pitt Panthers on Wednesday night. All right, let's get it started. Pitt leading by two. Cormac Ryan would set the tone early with a highly contested three to start the hot night for the graduate student. Then later in the first, Notre Dame leading by two. Nike Sambi would launch a three to get Pitt back out in front. And then, however, it would not last long. Marcus Hammond, the only senior being graduated as he's a graduate student, would answer with a three of his own from the corner, a ba-bang. And then, Endy leading by 11 in the first. In transition, Trey Ward sees it. Dave Goodwin, who breaks, pops, skirts over, and hits it. Notre Dame would finish the half on a 14-2 run. Now, moving to the second half, Notre Dame would stay hot as Ben Allen Lubin, the freshman, would back down graduate student Jamarius Burton to put ND up 16 with that. Then, later, in the second, leading by 14, Pitt would start to close the gap thanks to Nelly Cummings with a step back three over Matt Zona. And then his drive to the basket, pulling Zona with them. Cummings getting it downhill. Pitt comes in within 11. Then, with under a minute to play, an ND up eight. Cummings would inbound the ball to Burton, who launches a three against Ryan and gets the roll to put ND only up five. With 20 seconds to play, though, Trey Ward passes it off to a streaking Cormac Ryan and slams it down to put the exclamation mark. And Notre Dame hangs on to beat Pitt, 88-81. Murph, what a game that was. Yeah, and I don't know if you actually saw this in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, but the headline for the game was Shamrock, number 25 Pitt loses the crucial game to Notre Dame. Yeah, you would have to know. However, we at NDTV like to follow the story and to continue playing on that. The linebacker, let's could say, was shamrocking, but we do have a little evidence as some of our own media members here went into the linebacker, let's take a look. There we have our correspondents ventured into the backer to follow the story. As you can see, the fearless producer and stage manager, Jake Miller on the left, and our panelist, JJ Post on the right, were able to confirm that Mike Bray did indeed get to the backer. And now to break down the loosest college basketball coach, some ways say, in a very Mike Bray approved attire to discuss the top moment as the winningest coach, we send it to our fabulous panel. Guys, what's rolling? Tyler Reedy alongside JJ Post and Andrew McGinnis rocking the Hawaiian shirts here on this Friday afternoon, this snowy Friday afternoon, I'll add, here at NDTV. Obviously, so much to celebrate Wednesday night and, of course, over the whole 23-year career of Mike Bray here at Notre Dame. But you know, each of you two as juniors have had the opportunity to spend last couple of seasons on this campus along with Mike Bray. So what I want to know is what's your favorite memory of the man himself over his time at ND? Well, I mean, I think you got to start off by talking about Mike Bray, the guy, because that the best way to describe Mike Bray isn't every man. He was someone that you never felt like, even though he was the coach of the basketball team, one of the most famous programs at Notre Dame, he never felt like he was above you. He was a guy that was willing to talk to you, even when we ventured into the backer, and he was able to give us a quote. We won't quote him on anything that he said, but there were some good ones. That being said, in terms of memories, I think it's got to be the 2013 Louisville game for me. Five overtimes, a game against a team that would go on to win a national championship that I don't think technically counts as a national championship anymore, 
but they did win a game held in the Final Four site on the last game of the season. But that was kind of game where, as a kid, growing up a Notre Dame fan, you know, as the clock kind of ticked down, it was past midnight, five overtimes, you're kind of sitting in your basement, wrapped in a blanket, trying to wait to go to bed. Notre Dame kept on fighting, and that was kind of the epitome of a Bray team. You know, they weren't always the most spectacular, but they were always fun, and they always kept on fighting. And I think that was the game that kind of summarized his tenure best. Yeah, I mean, we're wearing these shirts to honor, of course. I almost forgot. We're wearing these shirts to honor Mike Bray's attire, or lack thereof, from when the Irish won the 2017 Maui Gin Maui Invitational Tournament. But I want to go back to a different tournament that Notre Dame won. And, you know, a lot of great things happened during Mike Bray's time here. But the biggest banner in Purcell Pavilion that's going to honor his legacy is that 2015 ACC Championship uh Banner that's hanging from the rafters at Purcell. That Irish team, so talented. Jaron Grant, Pat Connaughton, Zach August, Demetrius Jackson, Steve Astoria. Some good guys coming off the bench as well who played a big role in future seasons as well. Just so much talent. A classic Mike Bray team that shot the ball incredibly well and gave it their all on defense. Made up for their lack of size and short rotation with that shooting and all that good stuff. And, you know, to go from you know, one of the worst teams in the ACC in Notre Dame's first year in the conference the season prior to winning the ACC that year and then going to the Elite Eight that season and the next year. Just some of his best coaches and moments that I'm going to remember for a really long time. Yeah, and the perspective from the students is a big thing to talk about as well because unlike the majority of other coaches in America, Mike Bray did a heck of a job relating to the student body, relating to his student athletes. Such a great people person, as he was often described, and that'll help him a ton even after Notre Dame, whether he goes into broadcasting or potentially a next head coaching gig somewhere else. But I want to talk about you know, what did he mean to you as students? You know, JJ, you had the big poster the other night at the pit game, the iconic image of him standing on the South Dining Hall table, firing students up. How much did that mean to you guys, having him form that relationship with the student body? Yeah, I think Mike Bray's one of his priorities was always to have an engaged student body. He was a guy that I think knew that for Notre Dame, you're never going to have the biggest crowd in the world. You're never going to have the national interest. So you got to play to, you know, the kids that are going to be there every game in and game out. And for Notre Dame, that wasn't a lot. And he was a guy that understood that and wanted to give them his all. And he always did. Yeah, that level of passion that JJ's talking about was just really unmatched by most coaches. You know, obviously, like you were saying, Notre Dame men's basketball, it's never going to be the forefront of Notre Dame athletics. But Mike Bray did his best to make it a key part of campus life here. When Notre Dame men's basketball was at its peak, you saw that. And you saw it last year, too, when they were able to bounce back and have a big season, finishing at the top of the ACC and making it into the March Madness. That interest level was there, and it was there when the team was good, but it was even better because of the special person that Mike Bray was and how his personality carried over to all quarters of campus. All right, let's flip it over now from the hardwood to the gridiron and send it back to the main desk with some news on the Notre Dame football team. 